not sure if you've noticed this or if maybe it's just in my head, but I feel like I have been training like a fucking baby for the last few weeks. I keep, uh, and every so often I do this and I, I always catch myself. I fall into like a rabbit hole of listening to buzzwords like, oh, you know, you, you know, peak contractile muscle recruitment, you know, all the classic, like meso reps, three second eccentric. Ugh. That is not what I'm about. I, uh, I've been overcomplicating my training, I'm doing simple ass, just squeezing sets. That's not what we're freaking about here. I gotta get back to, get back to basics. Right? When you think of any kind of experiment, or I don't know if you're, if you've ever done like labs in school, or if you've ever been in like an AP chemistry, whatever, right? You've done something cool. Right, you add some fucking, I don't know, you mix some aluminum and some iron oxide, you light that shit on fire. Whoa, that was fucking cool. The boring part is writing the fucking, you know, project report at the end of it. Explaining the exact details on why you did it, even though you already did it. So what I'm really trying to get at is, I've been focusing too much on the details. Like, oh, what kind of set is going to be the best? Oh, what kind of... Okay, I'll do like a light squeezing set. Yeah, no. I um, I need to return to my primary directive of each workout, which is to obliterate whatever muscle is in front of me. And then once I'm fully pumped and I feel like I've done enough, I get to say, all right, now we can leave. So, you know, of course my you know mentality with all the workouts, it does change. Uh, I feel like I've been through, uh, I've been subject to the propaganda of science-based lifters for a little bit, uh, as though I'm like, oh, well, there's a, there's one specific way to train. Uh, come on. Not good. Not good. But I'm not saying they're wrong. You know, my classic, uh, shtick for the most part is a lot of different shit works. You can do a lot of very different workouts, but you gotta remember the level of results that you're going to get, I don't think it's so much based on the actual workout composition itself as much as it is you know, based on the actual fucking intensity of the lift. Because look, and I'm not saying this just for you, I'm saying this for me too. I got to solidify this in my mind. Uh, like, if I see somebody doing a real fancy pants workout, they have like three sets of dumbbells in front of them because they're doing a triple drop set of, you know, RPE 8 with the 50s and then RPE 8 with the 60s and length and partials and skibbity, skibbity riz toilet. Come on, dude. That guy is never going to get bigger biceps than the fucking hunk next to him who gets himself fucking riled up, grabs the 60s, and just curls them like a freak. Now, of course, I'm not saying that I want to like try to curl the hundreds when I go into the gym today. That's not what I'm saying. I'm still going to do weight that's within my, you know, manageable amount, you know, but rather than sort of, yeah, man, fuck. I don't know. I just feel like I've been having better lifts when my main mentality with each set isn't like, okay, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get a peak contraction. I'm trying to get a, I feel like the better lifts that I've had are from the sets where I'm just fucking really getting into it and just pushing it as hard as I can and then not focusing so much on the details of it. That's really what I'm trying to say there. So that's not like I'm saying, a, I'm not saying that as a recommendation for you. Like, you know, you got to figure out what works for you. And I feel like I've been lifting for a little, for a little while. So... The guy who knows the most about what my body is going to respond to training-wise, guess who it is? And no, it's, um, well, okay, I was about to, I was about to say, no, it's not an Olympia-level coach. I'm not going to, they know a lot of shit. I definitely want to get some one-on-ones with them for sure, extract some knowledge and information. But 
what I'm really trying to say is, I'm the one who's done all the training. I'm the one who's seen the results that I've got from that training. And as long as you've got a little bit of a brain in your skull, you should be able to see, okay, this worked a bit better than this. Or even just on a more subjective level, okay, this feels way better than this. I'm getting way better pumps. I enjoy training more. Right. So whatever that style is for you, not only do I think people should just have a little bit of a ability to decide whether or not their training is good, but it's almost a little bit more psychological than that because if you're doing something that you actually enjoy and you believe that that's the best method for you, then look, I'm not going to say you're going to like manifest better results uh, because you always pick door number three and it always works out for you. But if you have that sort of positive mentality about what you're doing, it's going to be easier for you to go harder. You know, if you took two guys and you each, you put each of them through a training routine for a year, same diet, same, well, same diet, same size, dude, same basic genetics and, you know, ability to put on muscle mass. And one guy got to do a training routine, which I'm not saying he came up with it, but it's a routine that he stands behind. He likes the idea. When somebody tries to explain to him like why he's doing something, he can say, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, okay, all right, let's, and then you know, do his workout. That guy's gonna get better results than the other dude if he's doing workouts which he doesn't really stand behind, you know? And he's like, yeah, you know, I don't really know why my, let's just say they have, they each have coaches. And one guy's like, hey, I don't really know why my coach is having me do, uh, you know, supinated spider curls, but, you know, he's my coach, so he's pretty fucking smart. You gotta remember, there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no, uh, you know, association which bars people from writing bodybuilding coach in their Instagram bio. You know, there's no law that says you have to be a fully educated fucking, you know, a fully educated fucking lifter who actually knows what they're talking about to say, like, I'm a coach, here's what I talk about, blah, 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 blah. Half the, I mean, not even half. I'd say if you were to somehow use fucking omnipotence and look at every Instagram account that says bodybuilding coach, link down below. I'd say 90% of them are fucking dorks, guaranteed. Maybe not, but you get what I'm trying to get out there. So, do what works for you, and go through the process of finding out what works for you. Does that, I mean, can you not get behind that? It makes sense to me. You know? If you were trying to pick your favorite food, are you just gonna ask people what their favorite foods are, and say, oh, you know, 10 people really love spaghetti. I asked 100 people and 50 of them said uh, they love BLTs. I tried it and I don't really like it. But since they like it, I'll just pretend I do too. Come on, man. Not an awesome mentality to have. Don't fall for this peer pressure BS. Right? If you're right and 100 other people are wrong, you gotta stand by what you're right about. And that's not... It, it, try, I'm just saying, be a cool guy, do what you want to do, and do shit that gives you results. If it takes you, like, two years to find a routine that actually works for you, and, like, maybe you realize, like, okay, I get better... I've gotten better gains in my lats when I do really heavy pull-downs rather than lighter squeezing pull-downs. Then that's what you gotta do. You know, that's all I'm trying to get out there. But let's actually talk about the lift. I just went on a whole rant about training styles and whatever else plan is arms and not just arms uh, I was about to say arms aside like homicide it doesn't really roll off the tongue that well but tricep obliteration followed by bicep atomization right, so tries I definitely want to do some really heavy pushdowns <laughs> To the point where I'm only getting, oh my goodness, you know, maybe 15 reps. Because just as a bigger guy, uh, you know, I can throw 
three 45 pound plates on the side of a stack and do push downs. You gotta remember too, there's, you know, cables going up and down, making the weight easier, uh, but whatever. So I wanna go really heavy, really just destroy them, maybe even do some skull crushers. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit, sometimes they bother my elbows a little bit, so I'll be a bit more cautious about those. And then biceps will just be a ton of curls. Probably standing dumbbell, uh, well, I don't know, I'm just going to do whatever feels good. I can't even really guess right now, other than just listing off a bunch of curls that I know. You know, standing dumbbell curls, love it. Standing easy bar, love it. Preachers, love it. Cables, love it. Any kind of curl. I will say this though, I do avoid hamburger curls, because uh, you know, I'm trying to hit my biceps. I'm not trying to hit my brachioradialis. Or is it brachial? Who cares? Right. If I'm hitting biceps, I want to pretty much just try to isolate them. Uh, no matter what I end up doing, I can guarantee that at the end of this lift, my arms will be nice and fucking inflated with blood. So, nothing else to say but to get in there and fucking go nuts. It's been a while since I've done really heavy pushdowns, so I don't want to rip my shit off. So I'll just do two plates instead of the typical three. And honestly, I feel like three anyway is just asking for trouble. Like I'm going to have this cable rip one of my eyes out. Knock on steel. But let's uh, squeeze hard, burn out, nothing too complicated. No. No. Let's repeat that fucking okay, hundred thousand more times. That's a good one. This feels fucking killer. I think probably one more. I was gonna do skull crushers, but honestly, I think I'll just stay here. Let's just spam these. I couldn't help myself. I had to throw another one on. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, let's just run through maybe two more and triceps are done with these. Look, I'm only gonna do this one push down for triceps. That's the whole workout. But in no way imaginable would I ever believe that a tricep workout of just like light squeezing sets of like the rope with like 50 pounds or you know 20 pound kickbacks. You just can't tell me that that's not gonna do as much damage as this. And in my mind, this is the type of damage which I'm gonna recover and grow from. Honestly, I've been slacking on triceps, not in terms of overhead, but in terms of just overall fucking weight. I gotta get back to moving more steel around. Yeah. One more. Hello. more honestly i might even be satisfied stopping now but i really don't want to leave anything on the table i want to fucking kill my triceps today so two more and then a variety of curls heavy of course One more. Oh my god. Okay. Triceps are fucking wrapped in a good way. So let's go grab some dumbbells. Move on to part two of arms. I. Look, I cannot stress enough how satisfied I am with this lift, even though it was just one fucking movement. Well, for triceps at least. Of course, I'll do a few more with thighs. But you know what I'm saying? If it works, it works. It's been a while since I've curled the 80s. I think that they are long overdue. Especially by any form enthusiast standards, that was a shitty set. But I know for a fact I just wrecked my biceps. Even after just one, I'm already fucking pumped. Not all the way, of course, but let's just stay here, do some more heavy curls, and then maybe move on to something else. <sighs> Oh, my God. 
to drop it to the 70s for the next one uh, 70s are taken so just a five pound drop of 75s hmm. Let's just keep going here. I think that's enough dumbbell. Let's move on to uh, like creatures or something. All right, I think some single arm machine preacher curls should be perfect right about now. So one thing about this machine particularly, or in particular, is I don't love the handle as it is right now. If I bend over and grab just the handle, the angle that it puts my wrist at, it's just not, it's not awesome for me. So instead, I take a D-handle, loop it around, and something about the extra freedom of motion I get from being able to move this thing around just feels more comfortable. So right bicep's a little smaller, so I'm going to start with this one, and I'll get maybe 10 reps and some partials, match it with the left side, and I mean, buys are pretty close to done. I think maybe two of these, maybe three, then we go pose down. All right. Stinking more. I think I want to finish with a set of easy bar curls and then we can check the pump. Let's channel some fucking Dorian Yates energy and get nasty. Oh, <laughs> 
Ooh. Okay, that's good. Oh my goodness. No. Oh. All done. Let's go fucking pose down. This is a fucking a lot of OG talks were said right in this spot. Oh my goodness. But reasonable lighting. I feel fucking pumped to shit. Let's just see how we're looking. I can definitely tell my triceps are a little bit deflated because obviously I just did a whole bicep workout in between. Before I've been doing like tricep bicep, like push down, curl, push down, curl, back and forth, back and forth. And then ending arms when I'm fully pumped, tries and buys at once. So right now my triceps are a little less pumped than my buys, but it's going to be freaky nonetheless. Yeah, we all know it. So I definitely got to lift heavier sets. Look, I get a pump and I get a burn from doing, you know, 50 pounds on the cable stack with the rope, squeeze it for, you know, two seconds and do a nice slow controlled reps, whatever. But I mean, this is the arm pump and just the feeling of doing all those really heavy sets. I mean, it hardly compares if we're being honest. Oh my goodness. I mean, you tell me. You freaking tell me. Look, I'm not saying it's like a drastically different pump or anything, but I am fucking pumped as shit. No. Oh. What else is there? Most muscular? Yeah. I need a measuring tape. Because I know they're getting upwards of 20 or upwards of 19 close to 20 not there yet but i mean there's no contact between middle fingers and shoulders not even a fucking little so fuck man with that arms is complete now i get to go home eat a bunch of food not do my homework like i should and just fucking enjoy it so let's get in the car and ramble about some fucking random matter All right, now that is more like it. That was a lift, which I can now sit down in the car and say, oh yeah, oh freaking yeah, love it. So tomorrow for legs, I'm sure I'm gonna copy the same style. Hamstring curls will be pretty freaking brutish. Just fucking smacking the stack around and then trying to make sure I squat nice and heavy. Do some hard ass sets of leg extensions. You, I mean, I think you get the drill. You get the idea I'm trying to get out here. I mean, look, I'm not saying it's not a good lift if you fucking, you know, just curl the 30s really slow and really control it. But, but I'm just judging this off of my own personal experience. And guess what? That's going to fucking supersede the fact that you're upset that, I'm not saying you, but just that somebody's upset that I'm doing a nasty set of dumbbell curls swinging them, you know. Not that I you know, care that people say that anyway. So, plan now is stop at Kane's, go home, chow down, probably eat some more food. I've got some muffins and some steaks in the fridge. Well, the muffins aren't in the fridge, but some steaks in the fridge too. So I think the rest of the night will look pretty much like this. Kane's. Muffins, steaks, something else that I don't know. I'll see. I'll freaking see. So, reasonably quality sources of protein, right? Chicken. I assume Cane's is actual chicken breasts or tenders or whatever. It's not just like ground up, you know, chicken feet and beaks and whatever else like a chicken nugget would be. And then steaks and bunch of milk. I might even have to pick up a gallon on my way home. I had a half gallon last night. You know, at that rate, I mean, I'm going to have to fucking re-up. But, yeah, I think the bulk is just about kicking into gear. Not that I haven't been gaining weight, but this is, uh, I guess this is kind of worth going over. My last few bulks, what I've been doing is I do a little mini cut, like two months of dieting. I get, you know, moderately lean. I, I'm like a lean 230 or like a lean 220 like I was on the 
on like two cuts ago, but you know, lean 230. And then what I would do is I would jump straight from like two and a half thousand calories to 5,000. And I'd have an instant spike in weight. You know, I'd go from 230 to like 250, but then I'm just locked in at like 250, like upper 240s. And I just can't push it beyond there. Uh, just because I'm just going to keep talking. I'll do a loop around to the gates, but just because, you know, after like two months of 5,000 calories out of nowhere, you know, my metabolism almost catches up to me in a way where it's like, okay, this is my new normal, uh, whatever. Right. So in a sense, I like max out my, you know, calorie stimulus in a sense or in a way. And just, and then after like, you know, two months, two and a half months, I'm kind of just maintaining the same weight that I was at. So with this bulk, I did change it up a little bit. So these first three months, I haven't really been pushing the food that hard. Like I've been eating in a surplus, I've gained weight. Uh, I went from, I think the lowest weight when I started was like 230 something, 230? Not not more than 235 for sure. I think the starting weight was like 230, uh, I don't know, 230 something. Let's just say 233. And then now, you know, about three months later, 255, five pounds a month on just, you know, kind of eating as much as I'm hungry for, maybe pushing it a little bit up into 4,000, you know, three and a half thousand calorie range. But now I've been getting into, you know, five thousands, sometimes five and change if I'm a little bit extra crazy that day. So I'm going to really have to lock in because once you start eating a ton of food like this, and you're actually bulking and you're actually gaining weight. If you have a day where you miss your calorie mark and instead of eating, you know, your four and a half thousand, your 4,000 calories, your five, whatever, instead of hitting that goal, you only get in like, you know, maybe fucking, uh, let's just say 2,000 calories one day. Let's say you're extra busy with some shit. Uh, and fuck me, you just couldn't eat or you were irresponsible. You didn't prep your meals. That's usually the, the take I have. I need to get a little better at that. But you'll wake up the next day, and if you're really fucking pushing it and you're really bulked up and carved up, you can lose five pounds in a fucking day. Now, that's not five pounds of weight, you know, muscle. It's not five pounds of fat. It's just five pounds of intramuscular, you know, water and glycogen. And uh, as far as I'm educated, right, I see that muscle growth is going to happen the most consistently when you're fully fucking energized. You're full of carbs, right? You're eating in a calorie surplus. Your body has enough energy to use it responsibly right? and pack on some fucking contractile tissue and recover from your workouts. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of body fat gain or potentially a lot of body fat gain if you're eating too many calories. Uh, but, you know, that's just the nature of it, you know. I was talking to a couple of guys in the gym today, and they're like, how do I gain muscle and lose fat at the same time? And I said, if I knew, I would do it, right? Why do you think I'm bulking up and cutting, you know? Uh, apart from, like, natural gains where, you know, you're a total noob when you can actually do body recomp. Look, anybody who says they're doing a, a recomp uh, and they think that they're gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time, have I got something to tell you? Have I got a little piece of information to tell you? That's not fucking happening. Right? Look, sure, somebody could maybe do it, and like do a DEXA scan, and maybe they gained a pound. Maybe. Right? But I think your best approach is going to be understanding that in a bulking stage, in a bulking phase, right? you're gaining contractile tissue, you're putting muscle on your frame, but you're also you know, putting a little bit of fat on yourself too. Right? So the point of dieting in between bulks, if the end all, you know, goal of the whole, you know, back and forth is to gain muscle over time, is that the the bulk is to gain muscle and fat. And the cut is to just try to maintain the muscle and lose some fat. So at the end of a bulk and cut, like I've been doing, right, I bulk up, I gain some muscle and I gain some fat. And then in the dieting phase, I try to lose some of the fat that I put on, but hold on to the muscle, right? So at the end of that loop, I'm heavier than I was in the beginning. You know, I'll see people say like, what's the point of bulking up and just cutting down? All you're doing is you're doing a yo-yo diet. You're just going back and forth. 
Now, that could be true if you stay the same weight every time. You know, if for whatever reason I just could not get heavier at the end of a bulk and a cut. So at the end of like, you know, a six or eight month process, maybe five month bulk, three month cut, I'm the exact same size as I was in the beginning. Then yeah, you'd be right. There's no point. May as well just stay that lean size the whole time. But the fact that it does give me that extra fucking muscle with, you know, the uh, caveat of having to deal with some fat gain and some fat loss in between, that's what makes it worth it, right? So that's why I see the bulking and cutting method as working out pretty well for me. Now, of course, I have main gain for a while, too. I'm not, not knocking that. But you know, whatever you've got to do to gain muscle over time, I say lock in. Lock freaking in. And if you haven't tried bulking up, fuck man, what's stopping you? You may as well. You're not going to be any hungrier in a year than you are now. Right? So I say... Don't worry about putting a little bit of fat on, especially right now. It's fucking winter time. You're not walking around shirtless. Who gives a fuck? Right? Three months of bulking, you know, two months of dieting down, you're going to have a little bit more muscle for sure. As long as you're actually tracking your calories and training hard and, you know, doing it right. So I think that's, that's the end of my little speech there about my bulking, cutting rant. But no, that was a good arm day. Yeah, that's, that's how I fucking like it. Going heavy. You guys are fucking... Social media is plaguing my mind with, well, you you really want to load up the fast twitch fibers with some uh, with some cable curls with a ten seconds. Come on, curl fucking heavy, feel it. Don't hurt yourself. Get a pump. Overcomplicating it is just adding, well, overcomplications. That's how I see it at least. Never hurts to simplify your routine. But don't worry. Or I guess if you're excited to see me diet down, then I guess you should worry because this bulk is not ending anytime soon. Uh, I can almost guarantee. Yeah, I mean, fuck, it's probably going to hit at least the 200 day mark. Uh, I'm not saying that like I know exactly when I'm going to end it. But really, the only thing that's going to make me say, all right, it's time to cut down is if I'm not gaining any more weight and I haven't for like a month, right? And in that situation, of course, I'm gonna try anything I can, diet-wise, sleep-wise, training-wise, to try to break through that plateau. But you know, after you bulk for a while, you're gonna to get to a point where it's, you know, it's pretty hard to get the food down, you're actually pushing a lot of food, and you kinda of hit the limit. And that's when you do a little factory reset, right? Cut the calories down, I drop them quick. I, don't, I do not see too much benefit in really easing into a dieting phase. Unless, I mean, I guess unless you're trying to go straight into like a bodybuilding show and really get every bit of muscle you can on your frame. Because I don't mind a little bit of um, you know, intramuscular fluid loss from a quick dieting phase. You know, Because as soon as I drop from like my five and a half, five thousand calories to two thousand, in three days I'm going to lose ten pounds. And that's all intramuscular carbs and water, which that's not muscle fiber, right? That's like saying uh, that's like saying a balloon loses rubber when it uh, when you deflate it. No, man, the rubber is just the same there. It's just either extra full or a little bit flatter. Yeah, uh, whether or not you you know get what I'm trying to say there, whatever, what freaking ever. So. What else is there to say? Not freaking much. Um, I think I'm going to... Yeah, I want to do some Epsom baths. I need to get a tub at my house. Either like a plastic like farm trough style one. Or maybe like an inflatable one. Because my apartment doesn't have a fucking bath. All it, ha all it has is a shower. Right? And I want that fucking... I want that magnesium... What is... What's Epsom salt made of? Magnesium... Hepta sulfate. That that totally might be right. Magnesium hepta. Whatever, it doesn't matter, right? I feel good after having an Epsom bath, and then just taking a bath in general is fucking cool. I don't care how girly it is. So. Keep training. I'm uh, 
I think I'm going to try to get a little more progressive overload going. Not to the point where I'm trying to, like, you know, do one rep maxes or so. But, yeah. I gotta get back to my roots. Mass moves mass. AKA, the more weight you're lifting, the bigger you're gonna be. Now, of course, that's not completely true. There's guys half my size who can fucking bench more than me. In my, uh, well, maybe not half my size, but there's guys much smaller than me who, in a one rep max, are stronger than me. Right? Strength doesn't always mean size, but size pretty much always means strength. So, heavy sets for upwards of eight reps. I think you're definitely in the hypertrophy range, especially if you're actually hitting legit failure. So, I think that's all I gotta fucking say. Oh shit, I've drove for a while. Alright, I probably won't get Canes then, I think I'll just get McDonald's. I'm not gonna drive all the way back there, that's freaking nuts. But, calories will keep increasing. Uh, I'll do a full day of eating soonish. I know I'm really bad at adding those in. But don't worry, I'll probably get one within the next few weeks. Or the next week. Even if I say in the next week, I don't really have much... Um, there's not really much stock behind those words, because I've said that forever. Like, I've said I'm going to do one in like a week, and then I don't do it for two months. But it'll happen. Don't worry. I know, I know you love seeing me eat a bunch of treats and chocolate milk and cereal and steaks. Everybody loves freaking out about that. That's all I got. Good lift. It's only 8.20. I get a good night's rest tonight. Uh, I don't think I have to wake up early tomorrow, though. So even better. But, yeah, that's all I got. So, think about doing your cardio. I hope you would try doing it. Train hard, eat your food. We all get the drill. We all get the freaking drill. So, I'll see you tomorrow for what I'm hoping... It's going to be an absolutely gnarly fucking lick day.